So my first one is called The Haunted Forest. And this one will be pu published in my collection, my Gothic poetry collection coming out next year. Um, it was supposed to be this year, October, but unfortunately due to the whole COVID situation, if things have been pushed back. Um, so yeah, so we'll see how it goes. Um, so this one's called The Haunted Forest. Dusk settles silent, no sing song of thrush. I watch the sky yoke orange and red, pierced on the black thorns of branches. The pathway hushed under each footfall, whispers of moss, twigs and withered leaves. I walk to an indigo darkness where no owl hoot swooned, nor wild deer thrashed, hot blooded through the tangle of trees. Lost for hours, I had rested, bone weary against the womb of an ancient oak, but somehow slid asleep. The sky swelled overhead, rusting the air with a heavy tang. My heart staggered, a wild deer alerted, thr thrashing under my ribs. Quickening my steps, I weaved into the thickening trunks of trees, seeking cover. A gash of lightning ghosted the forest in white, and thunder shook the woodland from its roots. I felt raindrops trickling down my cheeks and a tight lace of trees around me snagging their fingers through my hair. I was slowed by crawling shrubs around my legs and shivering leaves above my head. Clawing aside the branches above, something fleshed warm on the palm of my hand, like rotten fruit or pupae wrapped in skin. Glancing up, I was horrified by the sight of severed heads dangling above, their necks dripping with sinew. They hung by hundreds, swinging in the wind, threaded on branches by their raven black hair. In chorus, they whispered through the forest, their eyes frosted and mouths muttering. Red raindrops falling, red raindrops falling. One by one, they sneaked their dry tongues out to feed on the drops falling from the sky. I looked down, my body was drenched in red as the sky opened up in blood. That's the end for that one. Um, I have a second poem. This was published in The Haunted Voices. And um, that was last year. And I was so happy when my, my story got picked for the, the anthology. So uh, thank you, Rebecca, who's my publisher, by the way. Um, okay. This one's called The Bean Eye of Glen Arros. In the dark of the night, over the trees of Glen Arros, a cry coiled from the forest, strangling roots like a serpent ensnared in a wooden web. Aldith laid on her bed, eyelids heavy in dream, hair latticed across rose-tinted cheeks, pale yet feverish in a fitful sleep. The sound slithered into the shadows through creaky windows and splintered doors, poisonous and sinewy in a deadly silence. The cry was half human, half creature and dragged Alda from the arms of slumber. She stumbled barefoot onto the stone-cold floor. She wandered weary into the woodland, the thorns, pines and nettles snagging flesh, but finally she found her way to the water's edge. There, bent over by the brook, she saw a woman as gnarled and crooked as ancient trees. Her claw-like feet clung onto the lichen rocks as she scrubbed a pile of blood-stained rags. Closer and closer, Aldith creeped, but alas, the old hag had already foreseen. With one eye, the creature honed in on the girl and spat snaggle-toothed into the brook. Aldith recoiled at the sight of the crone. I am a seer, messenger from the other world. Come near and knowledge I will impart to your heart's desire. Curious, the girl stepped closer and asked for her name. Some call me Banshee, some call me Lavon Dier. I am Bean Nye, the midnight washerwoman. Why be fear to me? Come hither and I shall tell you more. All the inch forward, the rocks were slippery sleek. I wash the, mor the clothes of mortals soon to drift on their underworld journey to death's abyss. Come, look. Upon hearing those words, the girl's heart lurched. There, against the hag's saggy breast clutched, she saw her own frock sodden on rocks and botched with blood. She staggered and she fell into the water. Thank you.